Kama urges community leaders to protect community from COVID-19. Decision to further ease CMCO restrictions to be made next week. Hello and good afternoon. I'm Mohana Priya. Welcome to Updates at Noon. Prime Minister Tansri Mohidin Yassin has called on community leaders to take on a greater role in protecting the community from COVID-19 infection. He explains that the community leaders can help educate the people to be more responsible and ensure their compliance with the SOPs, which will in turn ease the heavy burden now borne by healthcare frontliners. Earlier, Tansri Mohidin was briefed by Senior Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob and Health Director General Dato Dr. Noor Hisham Abdul on developments regarding the COVID-19 situation in the country. The Premier also expressed his satisfaction with the government's achievement throughout the war against COVID-19. Despite undergoing the 14 days of self-quarantine at his house, Tan Sri Mohidin said he will ensure the government will keep on fighting the pandemic. The Prime Minister said he had directed for the deportation process to be expedited to reduce the risk of disease spreading among the illegal immigrants being held at immigration detention depots. So the question is, can they speed up the process? Or because they have been round enough, can they not just immediately be sent if the logistic of uh, some other by air, uh, by ferry, by boat has been rearranged, has been prearranged for that purpose? I don't know. I mean, uh, that is uh, part of the thing which I'm concerned about at the time. Because if not, the place of detention will be on another note, Tan Sri Mohidin also dismissed allegations that he is now in Singapore for medical treatment. The government will intensify ops benthing operations at Malaysia's borders to prevent any illegal immigrants from coming into the country. Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said since first until Yesterday, relevant authorities detained about 327 illegal immigrants and 41 boat skippers for trying to enter the country through illegal routes. Explaining further, the senior minister said seven individuals believed to be human traffickers were also arrested and seven vessels seized. He added that about 1,515 foreigners who trespassed Malaysian borders were also nabbed through Ops Benteng. 86 parti telah pun diusir, tiga, termasuklah tiga tekong dan juga tiga kapal yang diusir kerana cuba merentasi sempadan negara kita. Jadi seperti yang saya sebutkan bahawa kita memang serius di dalam mengawal sempadan kita dan kita akan terus memperketatkan kawalan di sempadan terutamanya lorong-lorong tikus. Ops Benting, which involves the personnel from the Armed Forces, Royal Malaysian Police, Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency and the Malaysian Border Security Agency, was aimed at tightening security at the country's borders to prevent illegal immigrants from coming in, combat cross-border crimes, as well as to curb the spread of COVID-19. Meanwhile, the senior minister said that the countries from which the illegal immigrants originated from have agreed with the government's proposal to send them back home. Datu Sri Ismail Sabri said Wisma Putra had met with its counterparts from Indonesia, Nepal and Bangladesh to discuss the process of sending the immigrants back. Dan saya juga dipahamkan bahawa Wisma Putra telah menghantar nota kepada semua pejabat kedutaan yang mana rakyat mereka masih berada di depo tahanan. Jadi saya mengharapkan supaya kedutaan-kedutaan negara lain mengikuti apa yang dilakukan oleh kedutaan Indonesia, Nepal dan Bangladesh ini. Indonesia, Nepal and Bangladesh also commended the effort taken by Malaysia that screened the immigrants before sending them back. Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri also thanked the three countries for agreeing with the government's proposal to send them home. 
An immigration officer and 354 illegal immigrants from Bukit Jalil, Semenye and Sepang immigration depots have tested positive for COVID-19. Senior Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said all patients have been sent to the quarantine centre in the Malaysia Agro-Exposition Park, Serdang, to be isolated and treated. Sehingga 27 May, daripada keseluruhan saringan 4,399 tersebut, 354 parti dari ketiga-tiga depo tersebut didapati positif dan telah pun dihantar ke MAEPS untuk dirawat. Iaitu 305 parti daripada Depo tahanan di Bukit Jalil, 45 semenyih dan 4 daripada KLI, Depo KLI. Datuk Sri Ismail added that only 13 individuals are still awaiting their test results. He also said since the Malaysia Agro Exposition Park Serdang or MAPES a quarantine and treatment centre was opened, 370 illegal immigrants have received a treatment there with 16 discharged. Since the beginning of the Conditional Movement Control Order, or CMCO, the Health Ministry recorded a total of 1,189 positive COVID-19 cases in the country. Health Director General Datuk Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah explained that during the period, there were only 270 cases, or 22.7%, that involved Malaysians, while the remaining 77.3%, or 919 cases, were detected among non-Malaysians, including those isolated at the immigration depots. Sejak bermula dengan PKPB didapati trend penularan COVID-19 di kalangan masyarakat setempat adalah semakin berkurangan dan seminggu dari seminggu sebelumnya ini tidak mungkin dicapai tanpa kerjasama dan kepatuhan orang ramai kepada nasihat, saranan dan SOP kerajaan serta juga aktiviti penguatkuasaan oleh pelbagai agensi kerajaan. On another note, Dato Dr Nur Hisham said the decision to further ease CMCO restrictions on the other sectors will be made in the first week of June. The Health Director General explained that this depends on whether the daily COVID-19 cases in the country could be sustained at double digits or even single digits. He said that if the number of new cases could be sustained, the government might open up more sectors, including the social and education sector. Dato Dr Nur Hisham also hoped that the public would continue to abide by the standard operating procedures or SOPs as a social responsibility, social discipline and social compliance are very important to break the chain of COVID-19 transmission in the country. On another matter, Datuk Dr. Nur Hisham said that no immigration officer stationed at the Padang Besar Immigration Customs Quarantine and Security Complex tested positive for COVID-19. He said this after it was reported that six Thai students who previously passed through the checkpoint tested positive for the virus. Apabila mereka sampai ke uh, uh, sempadan negeri, uh, negeri Perlis, uh, mereka kena cop pasport dan sebagainya. Jadi dalam uh, uh, semasa mereka cop pasport, ada pendedahan uh, pegawai imigresen kita uh, dengan pelajar-pelajar uh, tersebut. Jadi uh, apabila mereka sampai ke negara Thailand, uh, mereka telah jalankan ujian, ujian itu positif dan dimaklumkan kepada kita. Jadi mereka dan pegawai ataupun uh, staff uh, immigration yang terlibat uh, ada terdedah kepada mereka close contact. Uh, mereka telah disaring setakat ini tak ada yang negat, uh, positif. Nevertheless, Datuk Dr Nur Hisham added that the immigration personnel have been instructed to begin their 14-day quarantine period. He also said that the Padang Besar ICQs has been temporarily closed for now. 
The Ministry of International Trade and Industry, MITI, is identifying multinational companies that are looking to relocate their operation in the ASEAN region post-COVID-19. Its minister, Dato Sri Mohamed Azmin Ali, said the ministry is looking at Japanese companies as the Japanese government announced a 2.2 billion US dollar economic stimulus package for them to relocate their operations from China to the ASEAN region. Dato Sri Azmin said MITI will strive to convince Japanese investors to use Malaysia as a new investment destination, as well as a hub to penetrate the ASEAN market. Di kalangan negara ASEAN, kita ada lebih 650 juta population. Dan saya percaya sekiranya Malaysia dapat menyediakan prasarana yang terbaik, infrastruktur yang baik, politik yang stabil, kemahiran tenaga kerja, kita boleh menjadikan Malaysia sebagai destinasi pelaburan baru bagi syarikat-syarikat MNCs yang kini sedang mencari tempat untuk meletakkan pelaburan mereka. Dan untuk melakukan usaha ini, tenaga kerja kita harus bersedia. Datuk Sri Mohamad Azmin said MITI's focus was on high-tech industries that would create better employment opportunities for local workers. As part of reviving the country's creative industry, the government has decided to include the agenda of promoting and empowering the local animation industry at the global stage. Finance Minister Tengku Dato Sri Zafrul Tengku Abdul Aziz in his social media post yesterday said this would be part of potential measures that the government could consider for the upcoming short and medium term economic recovery plan. Tengku Dato Sri Zafrul said one of the hardest hit sectors during the COVID-19 pandemic is the nation's creative industry. As such, the finance minister had met with the local creative industry players to discuss potential measures to revive the nation's economy. He said among the topics that were discussed included support to boost the animation industry internationally and adoption of technology in other industries. The meeting also discussed providing financial support for musicians such as buskers or street musicians and performers as well as the reopening of art centres with the standard operating procedures or SOPs in place. Also discussed were measures introduced by other nations to protect and support their creative industries including opening arts centers. The government is working to transform the development of the mineral mining industry to greatly impact the national income and improving the living standards of the people. Energy and Natural Resources Minister Dato Dr. Shamsul Anwar Nasara said this includes reactivating the mineral-based downstream industry and forming a value chain and ensuring sufficient supply for domestic consumption. Explaining further, Dato Dr. Shamsul Anwar said this concept could create more job opportunities as well as having surplus in exports in the future. He said the development of mineral mining industry in the future will no longer use the mould and model that have been implemented previously, that is, the production of raw materials for export directly to overseas markets. He explained that the establishment of the Mineral Development Authority of Malaysia was also proposed to drive the growth of the mineral industry and regulate development activities so that they are implemented safely and sustainably. He said the ministry also implemented a specific study on the potential and development of minerals at selected areas nationwide based on an existing airborne survey. He said based on the study that had been carried out, there are still a lot of potential areas with mineral resources that have not been explored and developed commercially, such as the tin mining areas along the western coast of Peninsula Malaysia from Perlis to Mua Johor. And that's it from us this afternoon. In our top story today, PM urged community leaders to play a greater role to protect community from COVID-19. News on 2 comes on at 7 this evening. Till then, I'm Mona Priya. Thanks for watching.